If you haven't already heard, Tel Aviv is among the top vegan-friendly cities in the world, which is creating quite a buzz. Tourists hailing from all over the world are flocking to the vegan capital of Israel, just as the country has found itself in the midst of its own vegan revolution. Tel Aviv's vegan craze has been booming in recent years and shows no signs of slowing down, which is why today we met up with professional food tour guide, Evie, who's going to show us the best vegan eateries around our favorite city. So why don't you tell us what we could be expecting so okay. Tel Aviv is one of the top vegan uh, destinations in the world today. And we're going to try and give you a nice taste of why. We have some of the best restaurants, the best chefs, and the best dishes. And we're going to have an amazing culinary adventure. So veganism isn't just a diet, but rather a lifestyle. Am I right? Absolutely. Even by definition, being a vegan is not only abstaining from meat eating and chicken and fish. It's also not consuming any animal byproducts, no cosmetics, no riding on camels or horses or any of that. It's even up to a level that you can't go and visit a zoo or a circus. That is not somewhere you would find a vegan. Most Mediterranean foods are plant-based, with hummus and falafel being among the staple of Israeli diet. Joining the vegan ranks in Israel is not as challenging as you may think. With 400 vegan-friendly restaurants, I promise you won't go hungry. We're entering now Meshek Barzilai in the entrance to Neve Tzedek neighborhood. A health food restaurant turned vegan. Lovely, let's check it out. For a restaurant that is based entirely on organic foods and puts an emphasis on hearty, wholesome dishes, Meshek Barzilai is the place. It is the center for foodies and can be enjoyed by vegans and non-vegans alike. First of all, we are using in the vegan and organic foods. We are using in many fruits, tofu, saitem, in many soya, in many kidneys, in many fruits. We are making hamburgers from fruits and vegetables and tofu. Okay, I'm starving, so I'm digging in. Petavon, bon appetit. I'm gonna start with this. The chef brought out a delicious eggplant and pepper terrine, stuffed with cheese and pesto, as well as a vegan cheese platter and a delicious veggie burger. That's for you. Mm. Wow, that is just packed with flavor. Amazing. Some people may think that vegan food is bland, but I think that's just a myth. Am I right? Absolutely. It could be exciting and full of flavors. The inventive menu at this vegan bistro was created with the goal of offering guests something unique and has led it to being one of the leading organic restaurants in the country. I am a for אני לא אוכל בשר כבר המון שנים, זה לא דגים, לא בשר, לא ביצים, וזה עניין של זמן, זה פתח לי עולם אה, רחב יותר, אה, מלא קטניות, שאנשים אה, שאוכלים בשר לא מכירים את העולם הזה, וזה המיוחד, שיש אה, מגוון רחב. So that was really tasty and enjoyable, but before we get too ahead of ourselves, um, I think we should move on to the next restaurant. Absolutely, this was delicious. I enjoyed every bite, and we have so much more ahead of us. Let's go. So, Evie, when did vegan culture emerge here in Tel Aviv? Well, it's been uh, around for decades and centuries, but in 2012, a Gary Urovsky visit, one of the biggest speakers of veganism in the world, uh, really caused a real uh, burst of uh, vegan culture. Really? Yes. Okay. and it became from a trend to a real lifestyle. Today we're going to talk about the world's forgotten victims, animals. Yurovsky's eye-opening lecture spread virally, with a million Israelis tuning in. Shortly after, veganism went mainstream, and now signs of the revolution are ubiquitous. Also, on top of that, 12 to 15 percent uh, of Israelis are vegetarians. So together, 15 to 20 percent, that's one out of five to one out of six Israelis is a vegan or a vegetarian. That is huge. 
That's like about double the world average. So we're definitely world leaders, and we could also see it translate into a number of businesses that are vegan. Uh, vegan businesses could be not only restaurants, but caterings, hairdressers, hotels, even a tour could be a vegan tour. And there are 700 registered businesses as vegan friendly uh, in all of Israel, around half of that only in Tel Aviv. So this is definitely a vegan capital and a place that attracts and uh, shows the possibility in veganism in its most beautiful, pure way. We're entering now Nanuchka, the first 100% Georgian vegan restaurant in the world. Wow, impressive. Yes, very delicious. Actually, it's outstanding because Georgian cuisine is typically not vegan, mm -hmm. but they made the change here and it is amazing. Yes, Georgian cuisine and culture is all about good food, good drinks, and hospitality, and good music, and being together. So, it should be exciting and fun. Absolutely. Let's go. Nanushka offers a multi-sensual experience. By night, the restaurant transforms into a fun night out accompanied by belly dancers and music. These are typical Georgian dishes. This is pchali, which is an assortment of different salads. And we have amazing uh, stuffed vine leaves, um, badrijani, which is an eggplant uh, delight. And here we have khinkali, which are the Georgian stuffed uh, dumplings with, uh, with mushrooms and truffles. For sure, knowledgeable Georgian cuisine. Well, I love this place. It's delicious. It's a multi-sensual experience. The music, the atmosphere, Everything about this place is delightful. Yeah. So I know that the walnut is the king of the kitchen, the Georgian kitchen. Yes. So here's the crushed walnuts mm -hmm. mixed with uh, Also with uh, eggplant, yeah, different herbs. The restaurant wasn't vegan when it launched until one day they decided to remove all the animal-based products from the menu and transform them into vegan delights. We don't be vegan all the time. We change uh, uh, before four years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, we, before we eat and sell a lot of uh, meat, mm -hmm. but we decide. I decide to do the change because I think it's the better if you can eat so many food, delicious and mm -hmm. good and healthy, and you don't need to kill anybody to eat it. Mm -hmm. So this next place that we're going to is a Persian vegan restaurant, right? Yeah, it's super interesting. It's run by a Persian family and it's really innovative. The dishes here are some of the best you will ever have in the vegan culinary wow. world. Wow. This keeps getting better and better, huh? Yep. Now, some say this vegan restaurant is the best in town. The Persian-influenced dishes are prepared with the freshest and highest of quality ingredients. Cheers to that. Bechaim. On my tour, wow. we enjoy a chaser arc in the beginning of, or the end as an aperitif or a digestive. That is so oh. <laughs> The ecological inspired interior design consists of second hand everything from the furniture to the dishes and even the carpet stapled to the roof. אנחנו הראשונים, בין הראשונים שפתחנו, והמיוחד אצלנו, שאצלנו הכל מהשורש, לא מכניסים אוכל מעובד, הכל פה מאבדים פה, כל האוכל ירקות, רק ירק. The vision of the head chef was to appeal to a non-vegan crowd by focusing on the ingredients rather than just finding alternatives to meat. We started out with the caprese salad with vegan ricotta and fresh veggies. As delicious as that was, the cauliflower gundi took it to a whole other level. The traditional Persian dish is a soup that consists of meatballs and chickpea flour, but the chef included his own personal spin on it by grinding cauliflower, chickpeas, and other veggies. So this vegan movement is growing and growing. Do you think it's just a phase or, or it's here to stay? Well, the numbers are rise, rising all the time. Mm -hmm. So is awareness and you know sharing information and activism. Uh, it's definitely a way of life today. It's not a trend anymore. Between 2 to 5 percent of Israelis consider themselves as vegans. That equals to 1 out of 20 to 50 people. Sounds like a lot, right? 
and now even those doing their mandatory IDF service can keep true to their vegan lifestyle, with the IDF offering vegan meals and is even issuing leather-free combat boots. Cheers! Bechaim. Vegan cocktails! After enjoying the last meal, I asked Evie to take us to one last place. And I know you're probably thinking, how is it possible to eat any more? But I do need to satisfy my sweet tooth. So we're now at Jella, the first 100% vegan ice cream place in Israel. We're gonna have some soy almond milk based ice creams. What do you recommend? Snickers? You need to do what you usually do. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Jella offers 18 flavors of almond-based ice cream. It looks just like real ice cream. Can't even tell the difference. Very authentic looking. Even with the flavor. And tasting. Yeah. I love their flavors. They're so amazing. <laughs> wow. Really enjoying that, huh? Yeah, tasty. Whoa, yum. I like mine better, though. I like mine better. <laughs> great. Well, I had a great time exploring the city with you in the vegan capital of the world. And this is just a little taste of what Tel Aviv has to offer, all right? Absolutely. And the purpose of the tour as you kind of sensed, was not to convince anybody to become a vegan, but it is to show the possibility and the abundance and really amazing life, vegan lifestyle we have here. We really want you to take one thing from here today, and if we could give you a message to take would be, if we all make a small little change in each other, uh, in ourselves, in global aspect, it will be huge. We're gonna make together the world a better place. Wow, I like how you said that. So although Israel is indeed the land of milk and honey, many choose to make it an almond milk and date honey. Mm -hmm.